my goal here is just to give a little bit of background um, that will help um, understand whales in California, in the California current ecosystem in the big picture and uh, to lead into some of, some of the more detailed uh, modeling work that Jessica will be talking about later. I'm with the Southwest Fisheries Science Center, which is a branch of NOAA, NOAA's National Marine Fisheries Service, where I've worked for the past 29 years doing marine mammal um, population studies and human impact studies. Um, we, the most common method that we have for um, studying large whales is um, going out on NOAA ships, doing large scale, um, that is entire California current, surveys of the uh, density and abundance of, of marine mammal species. Um, not just the large whales, we also are surveying for dolphins, porpoises, and uh, the at sea distribution of pinnipeds as well. Um, the method we use is searching with 25 power pedestal mounted binoculars and with these binoculars we can see whale blows easily out to the horizon and in fact we can see um, jumping dolphins out to, to five nautical miles away from the ship. Um, we have two of these mounted on the flying bridge deck of our research ships and uh, this one particular ship is the David Star Jordan um, but there are two other NOAA ships that we commonly use or have used in the past. Um, we do these types of surveys throughout the Eastern Pacific. Um, this just shows some of our track lines through from 1986 through 96, so this isn't even a very recent figure. Um, the major areas of our study have been the Eastern Tropical Pacific and uh, the California current ecosystem. Um, this, is, uh, this represents 200,000 kilometers of track line, um, which is about halfway to the moon, and uh, I'd like to say, at, done at the speed of a slow bicyclist. <laughs> um, typically, the, what we do is lay out a series of randomly selected um, but uniform grid lines, and then we conduct those surveys. A uh, typical survey will take 120 uh, days at sea, so it's a, quite an expensive endeavor and quite a large <coughs> endeavor. Um, in addition to the 25 power binoculars, we have a data recorder sitting in the middle position searching by naked eye and uh, finding some of those animals that pop up underneath the field of view with big glasses. Um, we use a method called line transect analysis to estimate the density and abundance of uh, marine mammals, including the large whales. Um, we, as we're traveling along the track line and we see something, we measure that angle theta the angle off the track line to the animals and the radial, radial distance r, which is the distance to the animals from the platform. We use uh, reticle mounted, reticle, um, reticles in the oculars of the binoculars to do that. And then from that we can estimate the distance d, how far they are off the track line. Um, the method we use, line transect method, can be thought of as a very simple modification of strip transect methods. So um, in strip transects, you survey along a strip, um, illustrated by that thing in white. You count up all the animals you see in that strip. Um, and the density estimate, density here, is the number of animals seen divided by the area searched. The number of animals seen is the number of sightings times the mean group size. So that's all very, and, and W is the half width. Oops. L is the length of your, your survey, and W is half of the strip width. Um, to go from that to line transect, all you have to do is recognize that the assumption of strip transect is poorly met for cetaceans. It assumes that all animals are seen out to some distance W. Well, that distance would be very short for all animals seen. In line transect, it relaxes that assumption, so line transect assumes that all animals are seen on the track line. And we can even relax that assumption if we can measure the track line detection probability. So as we go from strip transects to line transects, really the only change in the equation is that W becomes, rather than the strip width, it's the effective strip. Effectively, how far can you see? And I won't go into the details of how we estimate those. Um, this is a typical um, survey that we did. This is the 2001. Um, the 
sort of the, the smaller, um, fainter lines in here are the actual tra transect line survey. And we don't always accomplish everything we lay out, but we, but we like to come close. Um, but these show the strata that we use for um, coming up with stratified estimate of abundance from line transect methods. And the strata are really big. So we have Oregon and Washington um, combined, Northern California, Central California, and Southern California. Line transect methods are great, but they don't allow us to get at really fine scale patterns. This is about as fine scale as we feel comfortable going. Um, the offshore line here, by the way, is, is about 300 nautical miles offshore, which is the edge of the California current ecosystem. <laughs> Um, get into some of the results um, for three whale species, fin whales. Um, we made, we did these abundance surveys, um, four of them. Uh, they covered the entire uh, area, including Oregon and Washington. Those estimates ranged from about 1,800 up to about 3,000, the more recent surveys, indicating some evidence of a trend in abundance. Um, each, the distribution of transect lines and sightings for each of those surveys are shown in the lower panels. And you can see that, in fact, the distribution seems to have shifted so that we're getting more sightings in both the Southern California area and in the far northern areas. Um, Jeff Moore has a poster. I hope you all had a chance to see it uh, yesterday, where he did a Bayesian analysis of our trends in fin whale abundance and showed that, in fact, over this time period, um, it's almost unequivocal that fin whales have increased in abundance, and the um, growth rate is, is somewhere around 3% per year currently. Um, this represents the seasonal distribution of our survey efforts and sightings. And uh, they show that, basically, fin whales are found in all of these areas um, in all of the seasons. The seasons uh, are July, August on the left, uh, September, October to mid-October in the middle, and mid-October to December on the right. So not a lot of shifting in distribution for this species. Um, blue whales, um, the abundance estimates have clearly gone down for blue whales. And uh, we have an explanation for that. And actually, it's in a published paper that John Kalamakitis and I have published recently. And that is that blue whales have shifted their distribution further north, so far north that it's now outside of the study area for much of the summer. So you can see that shift in distribution with these sightings now in the Oregon-Washington area. But there have also been sightings off of British Columbia and in, in the Gulf of Alaska. And so they're going much further north to feed now. Um, Fortunately, we have another tool in our toolbox for uh, large whales, and that's photo ID. And if you look at the photo ID estimates of Kalamikitas et al. Um, using mark re recapture technique, you see that blue whale abundance have been, has been relatively flat during this time period, or possibly increasing, at the same time that the line transect estimates have decreased. This shows the power of using the two tools. Um, blue whale seasonal abundance shift. <laughs> Clearly, um, blue whales have, by mid-October, November, um, decreased overall in abundance. And there's uh, generally, they're seen further, further north in the September to mid-October time period. Humpback whale abundance. From our line transect estimates, it looks relatively flat, uh, abundance of around 1,200 animals. Um, but once again, we have a more powerful tool for estimating the abundance of humpback whales. Um, the distribution is primarily um, very coastal on the shelf in uh, central California and further north. Um, they're not um, picked up very frequently in southern California on our, on our surveys. Um, these, the red line <coughs> represents a, a fit to the humpback whale market capture abundance estimates. It clearly shows a very strong increase in the abundance of humpback whales during this time period from 1990 uh, to 2008. And this is also from Kalamakitas et al. I think that's all I, all I have to present. Any questions? Real quick, um, what period of time does it take to do the whole survey? Is it always done south to north or north to south? Or 
It um, takes about, about four months to do the entire survey. Our um, ideal, we're, we don't always have control where, where we pick up the ship to start from. Um, our ideal is to start in the south, do the entire area twice. So that if there are migrations going on during this time period, um, that that effect is swamped out. But uh, in fact, Oregon, Washington becomes unworkable by October, and we have to be out of there by then. So that's sort of a constraint we have to live with. Are we going to have questions after? Yeah, we can have questions during the discussion too. Um, but you know, a couple questions is fine. <coughs> so. Uh, all the people on your boats took sightings were very experienced sighters and identifier crew. So there was no question about this type of other thing. Yeah, versions. we we like to have a mix of talent, um, but um, even the, the the newest newbie on our crews has been out on at least as fishery as observers before. A lot of at sea experience and a lot of experience on marine mammals prior to our our cruises. We we usually have the pick of the best. Thank you, Jack.